What is up everybody and welcome back once again. So as most of you already know, I recently launched a poll asking if you would like to see a tutorial taught on this channel. I was completely overwhelmed by the responses. I got so many, it was astonishing. I definitely mean that in a good way. But then the question became, what type of tutorial should I teach? So I launched another poll asking if you would like to see a magic trick or a card flourish. Now, if you've been watching this channel a while, you know that I consider myself to be a card magician, but I do dabble in cardistry quite a bit. So it was kind of difficult to decide what I was going to teach and what I felt comfortable teaching. Eventually the choice became clear. And as you could tell from the trailer, I'm going to teach you guys some magic. Now, before I do that, I do want to make one thing very clear. This is not a magic tutorial channel. This is not gonna be the place to go if you're looking to learn new magic tricks. There's a bunch of channels on YouTube that'll teach you that stuff, and I would happily leave the ones that I recommend down below, but ultimately, it's not my gig. However, that does not mean that I can't teach you little moves, little slides, or little things that you can work into your routines that you might already be doing. So with that being said, today we are gonna do a little bit of a deck review slash card trick tutorial, and I'm very excited to teach you guys. So let's get into it. Intro. <laughs> Okay, so today we are looking at the brand new False Anchors playing cards. These cards were printed by Clearly Magic in collaboration with the United States Playing Card Company. I believe they were designed in Florida by Phil Shaw. As you can see on the front of the tuck case, we have a, a big blue anchor in the bottom corner. It says False Anchors below it, and then there is a faint, faint uh, little preview of the back design behind it. I don't know if you can see that. Top of the tuck case just says false anchors. Add copy on the bottom. Perception is reality written on one side. These two linking chain links. And on the other side, premium playing cards with some anchors. Your back design is the back design of the cards. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of when uh, tuck cases have the back design on the back. It makes it good for one, knowing what you're buying, but two, there's certain magic effects. For example, if you know the vintage holdout, then you'll know uh, why this is such a good back for the tuck box. Inside the tuck flap just has an anchor. That is it. Nothing on the inside. No, uh, no stamping, no nothing. Nice and standard. All right now, when you take the cards out of the box, uh, they do come originally, I've shuffled these already and used them a little bit, but they do come originally in a stack. Uh, however, it's not a Mnemonica stack, and I don't think it's a Cy Stebbins stack either. I didn't really look at it that closely before I started shuffling, but uh, they did come in some kind of weird stack order. All right, so your Ace of Spades is going to be pretty simple. Uh, you're just going to get this blown up spade pip with the anchors kind of... It's a little preview of the back design again, just anchors in there. You are going to get two duplicate jokers. It's the uh, chain links linking together with the anchors on the inside. It's a mirrored design, which is also nice. You are gonna get a double backer, yas. And you're gonna get this other gaff card, which I'm gonna use to show you uh, the magic trick. So uh, we will get into that in a moment. The rest of your faces are gonna be completely bicycle standard. You're gonna recognize the cords. You're gonna recognize all of the faces. Really good for magic. You guys know I prefer uh, standard faces. These cards do come printed on a uh, crushed B stock, I believe. So they're very, very uh, durable, like bees, but they're also very, very soft because they're crushed. So uh, right out of the box, they feel great. They're not stiff. They fan pretty good. The back design of the cards, uh, at first glance, is going to look extremely, extremely simple. Uh, and that's, I mean, mostly because it is. You can see it's just these mirroring anchors. Now, if you're like me, uh, you look at every deck as an opportunity. You look at ways, different ways that it could be marked. Uh, and I am happy to report these cards are marked. Uh, I haven't figured out if they're fully marked yet. I know that they're at least marked for suit. I was able to, uh, to deduce that. 
I'll give you an example here. Let's uh, let's see. Cut the deck anywhere. And here we have a heart, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there we go. And the lighting in here is driving me crazy. It is driving me crazy. This happens like pretty much every time where the lighting will get weird and I still record five out of 10 videos in the same exact spot. I don't know why, I never learned my lesson. Now, rather than making this a full-blown deck review, this one was meant to be a tutorial. So, so let's go ahead and learn a magic trick. This is a trick that you can use immediately if you purchase the False Anchors playing cards. There is a, a lot of different decks you could buy that have a specific gaff card that you're gonna need, but why not pick up what's new? But ultimately what you're gonna do to achieve this effect, now it depends. Uh, if you just wanna do this for the camera and you wanna skip some of the pattern, the routine around it, uh, all you're gonna need is a double face card. Yep, that's the secret. That is the secret right there. So. Basically, here's here's the breakdown. Now again, this is something that I use uh, just as a visual thing. I use it sometimes as like a way to break the ice with somebody, just a very quick little thing you can do. Sometimes it's not even bad if you expose the, the gaff afterwards. But uh, anyway, here's how the trick is essentially done. If you're just doing it for the camera, you can just show the Ace of Hearts. Uh, you can force it on yourself just to make it look like it's a random card. But either way, you, you have the Ace of Hearts. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it at your fingertips, like that, okay? Now once you do that, you're just gonna pivot your wrist inward towards you and grasp. So at an exposed view, this is the position you're in. And then you're just gonna take your thumb and you're gonna push the card out. Now that's already a pretty interesting looking thing, so if you do it like this, right, you just take it and you're pushing it out. Now you're gonna wanna do this a couple times. So again, you're gonna take it Fingertips, pivot inward, push out with thumb, and it's essentially just gonna look like you're pulling your ace of hearts out of your hand. No magic, right? Now, after you've done that a couple of times, you're gonna take it again, so you'll wanna do it maybe like three times, right? So first time, you just wanna show them nothing funny about the ace. And then the third time, you wanna take it, instead of putting it this time at the fingertips, you wanna put it more in the palm of your hand, about midway, I would say halfway uh, between your wrist and your fingertips. Now when you do that, you're gonna do the same thing that you did before, you're gonna pivot your wrist inward, only this time, you're gonna notice the ace actually turns around. So when you hold it here, you're kinda of just bringing it around, staying face up, right? When you do it this way, and it's in your palm, when you pivot inward, you're actually just gonna turn your hand that way, leaving the ace now face down. Now, if you're doing this for a spectator, they're gonna think that what's behind this card is gonna be a regular card back, right? That's kind of the idea. So um, I'll, I'll go through a few tips if you're gonna work this into a live routine, but if you're doing it just for the camera, you're here, nothing strange. And then that third time, palm, goes upside down and you're pushing out an entirely different card. Now what makes this moment magical is it is just one card. So assuming that you're just doing this for the camera, uh, basically it's gonna look like you just changed a card and made the other one vanish completely. As long as you don't flash the back, that's exactly what that looks like. So you say Joker's a wild card. It can change into anything you want. Let's change it into the Ace of Hearts. So now that we've gone over how to do this uh, just for the camera, I'll kind of show you what it would look like in routine. So let's say you take your uh, deck of false anchors because you picked one up off of this review. Okay. So now here's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have a way to force the Ace of Hearts onto your spectator, okay? Uh, something that I like to do is I'll just cut the deck, get a break, have the spectator say stop whenever they want. Doesn't really matter where. So essentially you're doing a riffle force. You got your break here. And let's say they stop right there. You're just gonna pick up at the break and show them this card, right? So the Ace of Hearts. So now that you're here, what you wanna do is 
peel off the Ace of Hearts and just put the rest of the cards back. Doesn't really matter, right? So now you can you can lift up this card. You can hand them the deck. You can say, here, you know, hold this deck. I only need the one card you selected. And that's when you can get into your Switch. Again, it's very important. As long as you don't flash the back, they're going to assume that everything has vanished. So this is where you can use it to your advantage because now that they're seeing the Joker, you can have them spread through the deck and find the Ace of Hearts. So you can have them give you back the deck, right? You can, you can pocket your gaff card. You can do whatever you want with it. Just make sure that they don't see it. But now that the Ace of Hearts has vanished and turned into the Joker, you can just spread through the deck and show them, hey, here's your Ace of Hearts. Or you can do like an impossible location, like you can you can plant the real Ace of Hearts on you ahead of time, put it in your pocket or uh, you know under your hat, or if you're really good, you can put it under a spectator's drink, um, you know, or in their purse, and you can have it be a card to an impossible location. Anyway, guys, uh, that is all you need to be able to pull off a quick little intimate miracle, a very visual change that you can use to impress your friends, your family, uh, or your coworkers next time you're at work. So, uh, yeah, hope everybody enjoyed that. Hope you also enjoyed the review. By the way, uh, I would highly recommend picking up these cards. I love them. Um, I'm going to be using these cards pretty much all week. Um, trying out this new thing where I'm committing myself to a deck after I review it to see how it holds up and then I will report back so uh, this will probably be the only deck that I'm using this week so I will let you guys know what I think well guys I do really hope you enjoyed that trick I definitely hope you enjoyed the tutorial it's just a fun little visual change you can do for your friends it's definitely good for the camera so you got that going for you also do want to thank clearly magic for sending me this deck I will link their website down in the description so you can pick up your own deck of False Anchors playing cards. As always, leave a comment down below letting me know what deck you would like me to review just for you. Peace.